Welcome into CHGO White Sox Podcast, and welcome into our Studio A on the West Loop of Chicago. My name is Herb Lawrence. You can follow me on the Twitter machine at Ecknerwall23, that is Lawrence, spelled backwards, 2-3, for Rob Ventura. The guy to my left, camera right, is Vinny Duber. He is a CHGO White Sox beat writer. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber, and the show is at CHGO underscore White Sox. Our usual partner, Sean Anderson, is on assignment today. He was actually doing a broadcast live from Circa today for the NCAA tournament, which I think is still going on today, Vinny. Uh, I think it's still going on for several weeks, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. You should stop that right now. But we are also being produced by Sarah. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Um, hit that like button and subscribe button. I mean, we are at, I think, 52,000 Wow! on our 52.4, 52,400 people have joined us so far in subscribing to our YouTube channel. Be 401, 52,401 and two or three. Come on, hit that thumbs up also on this broadcast. As next Thursday, we're only seven days away from having a baseball game and we me and Sean Anderson will be out at Ballpark Pub, 514 West Pershing Road, out there on the south side, about four blocks south of Guaranteed Rate Field. So if you're parking in none of those lots in the south lots, just walk on over to 39th Street and Ballpark Pub is right down the street. We start broadcasting at noon that day. So come on out, enjoy some Lloyd and Kugel specials. We are going to have some swag to give away those, those days also. It is free to RSVP, so go to our website, allchgo.com, find the events page, and RSVP for that event so we know exactly who many people are coming, and we can also provide, the uh, you know, if there's too many people there, we can, you know, shut shut it down for a second because there's a lot of people that have already RSVP'd, so do it today so you don't miss your spot. And before we get into more of the show, I want to thank our new diehards, Will, Steve, Steve, Michael, Arvind and Eric. Thank you very much. Those people. Double dose of Steve, huh? Yeah, back to back. I don't know why you put them back to back. But Double, I, your, double your pleasure, double your fun. Yeah, not, no Stevens, though, just Steve's. So if you want to become an All CHGO diehard yourself, go to allchgo.com and become a diehard. You get this box, this lovely black box that I have in front of me with the white hat on top of it. You get a t shirt for free when you become a diehard. You get 20% off events. In the future. And we have an event coming up. Three events. The takeovers this year. The White Sox crew. We're going to go out to Guaranteed Rate Field on May 27th, which is Memorial Day. That's an afternoon game for us. The Toronto Blue Jays will be having a good time. The seats are on 147, which is in the third baseline. Or you can join us when the L.A. Dodgers come here on June 24th. A night game. Shoei Atani. Mookie Betts. Yamamoto, mm, you probably don't want to see him. That man got blasted today. Or if you're an August person, you could come out and see us play versus the Whites uh, versus the Cubs in 147. There'll be fireworks afterwards and hopefully fireworks during the game. So go to allchgo.com and become a diehard. You get 20% off of those events. So, Vinny, how are you doing today? I'm swell. I'm full. Oh, yes. Because today we'll be talking about Gavin. I'm Gavin Cheats. Garrett Crochet and how he did today and the comments that Pedro Grafal made pregame about the starting rotation. I wonder if there's a problem with the starting rotation and Garrett Crochet specifically being the opening day guy. And then we will also talk about spring training when Vinny was down there. If he saw anything that might think that it will carry over to the uh, regular season, deep into the regular season, that might surprise some people out there. But first, Vinny and I did go out to Guaranteed Rate today at the Vizzy Room, which is in the back left field corner. It used to be like a, a suite room. Beautiful, 
beautiful food. As Sarah's showing you the food that was on the display today, Vinny actually had some of that milkshake. It's called the Campfire Milkshake. It's just like a s'more, but just delicious milkshake, Vinny. A s'more? A s'more. <laughs> yeah. I can, how do I have a s'more when I can't have any? Have any? I don't know if you know that. It means. was good. You should okay. you should get it. If you're up at sweet level, you should have yourself a, a campfire milkshake. Yeah, they had a lot of good food. Like, they had a, a, a burger that was a smash patty, which we ate too fast, so we didn't take any pictures. You see it on the uh, screen right now. That one is going to be available only at the Shy Sox Bar and Grill. It's, it's got pulled pork on it. It's got pulled pork. It's got a big-ass onion ring. It's got onions baked into the smash burger. Delicious uh, flair right there. They have, of course, Miller Coors products. Uh, Lelini's Lounge is going to be serving beers all year long. And, of course, I'm drinking myself a delicious Barry Weiss right now. So when you do go to Guaranteed Rate, go to the Lelini's Lounge and get yourself a Barry Weiss, or you can get yourself a Summer Shandy. But, Vinny, is there anything that stood out to you as the best thing that you ate today at Guaranteed Rate Field? So I had a trio of sandwiches. I sampled the trio of sandwiches in, in addition to the uh – the shake that we showed, and also I didn't eat four entire sandwiches. They were in smaller Small. portions, though I probably could have because they were good. Uh, a ham and cheese was good. Uh, I love myself a pretzel bun, and that's what was on there, so that's good. Uh, I had a turkey, uh, which was also good with the Harvardi cheese, Harvardi. which is a, a top-notch cheese. Uh, but, no, I liked the uh, crispy chicken sandwich. That was that was pretty darn tasty. Had a nice, uh, like a almost like a Thousand Island uh dressing kind of on it right there uh but it was good chicken was good yeah I, as me i have always loved crispy chicken sandwiches and you've seen like the popeyes and the burger kings get into those wars the white Sox have finally entered the wars and actually i was expecting less from them but they are just as good as the sandwiches that i've tried at those uh, fast food restaurants now. just as good just as good as something you can get at burger king Rave, re rave review. <laughs> I mean, those. I mean, I don't know if you tried the crispy chicken sandwich at uh, Popeyes. I mean, mercy, that's just a delicious sandwich. And the White Sox did this sandwich without as much grease as those other sandwiches you get at Popeyes. So a healthy crispy chicken fried sandwich. But the one thing that I was like, what are we doing this for? Like, I get the vegan thing. I get the the vegetarian thing. And if uh, Possible is a sponsor of ours, is Impossible a sponsor? No. I'm sorry, Impossible. That hot dog that you guys had at Guarantee Rate Field, and Sarah, if you have the picture that the Vienna sausage thing pulled up, I was wondering what oh this was. My, I don't know if you've. Ever, I don't know if I'm saying it right. I know it's a city of Vienna. I used to say Vienna. So sandwiches. this is this is not to be confused with the Vienna beef hot no, dog that you have here no. all over our lovely city. Those are good. Yes. No, the little things that used to come in a little can, and they had like water they were sitting in that doesn't you, sound promising it was and you know when i was a young man i was a uh, not our family was, wasn't that uh, rich and so sometimes for a little snack you go get some vienna sausages and you get a cracker and you put those in there and you eat them off the thing you either eat those or you eat spam but exactly what that tasted like like those hot dogs from impossible were trash. I don't know if you are if you're a vegan. You're like, oh, this tastes too much like meat, and also terrible meat. So they can trash that one. But everything else I tasted, I tell you what, it was so good. I like that that ch crispy chicken sandwich was great. Um, I wish I could have tried that milkshake, but I said said in the video, I got type two diabetes, guys. If I would have drank that drink, that Vinny drink, man, you, I wouldn't be here right now. Because the blood sugar would have spiked, I would have been on a real lull, and I would have not. It would have not been worth it. But the look on your face, Vinny, when you're drinking that, it was like, God damn it! I wish I would have drank that because it looks so damn good. Did it taste like a s'more? Yeah, I believe what they pitched it as was the. It is a chocolate and marshmallow milkshake. I didn't know that marshmallow was a ice cream flavor, <laughs> but it is. Uh, it it t it tasted like that, and uh, certainly it looks the part with the whole. Uh, blackened marshmallows and all of that too. So even the chocolate rim on the glass there. So had I been able to have the full size one that you see in this picture, uh, I don't know if I'd be here. I'd probably have to be sleeping it off. I mean, they that's a good idea. They also had a Jack and Coke uh, float, which was one of my things I go get at the ballpark, but it's usually the virgin kind where it's just root beer and, and ice cream. But the Jack and Coke float sounds really good. But again, the diabetes wouldn't let me do that. Is there anything at a ballpark or a food that you like that outside of a ballpark that you think that 
is underutilized at Major League Baseball games. Like, I just think that there's so much more food that they could have at ballparks that that we just keep in that same lane of hot dogs, nachos, pulled pork type of stuff. Is there anything for you that you wish they had at ballparks? Well, I've said this over and over again, and this is kind of a half answer to your question, that my favorite item at Guaranteed Right Field is the deli sandwiches which they only have down in the right – I think it's the right field corner down there on the concourse. So they, they have them. Yeah. You can get them. Great bang for your buck. They come with a whole mess of chips. Real thick sandwich, you know. And so they do have them there. But I guess wouldn't you expect the, the regular – just the sandwich to be a little bit more prolific around baseball? You know what I mean? Maybe it's because it's a – it's not a hot food. It's a cold food, maybe. But, like, you think it's just as easy, if not easier, to make than all that other stuff, right? So you think it, they just make it way too difficult? Not just, like, I'm sure they don't just have regular white bread, which would work for me. If you just have a bunch of meat, white bread, cheese, lettuce, tomato, I'm in. Yeah, like, why isn't that at every station, right? Like, that's an easy thing to make, isn't it? it? It's maybe it's not. Maybe it's labor intensive. I, I mean, don't know. as a person that is pretty simple, the thing that I think, and it's on the sandwich scale... They don't have peanut butter and jelly at say, at these games at all, because that makes sense. Though. There's no, there's kids <laughs> everywhere. Like there's kids every single place you go to a ballpark, and they give you the small pizza, they give you the small hot dog, the fries, they give you the chicken fingers or the chicken nuggets. But who doesn't love a great peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And I know you're already serving peanuts there. And so I know people are like, well, people have allergies. Yeah, peanuts are everywhere there. And delicious. And exactly. And so why not have just a simple $5 peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which just, you just make it, you give it to people. I would eat the hell out of a bunch of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at the ballpark because I think they're inexpensive. They provide protein with the peanut butter and they're delicious. Give me a, give me some milk too. If milk. I, oh my God! I'm a I've nothing's ever, better on an August <laughs> afternoon than a glass of milk. I mean, I drink milk all the time, but oh. I'm not trashing milk. But like, that's you know, a kind of a hilarious thing to be drinking in the middle of the summer. Oh, no, <laughs> delicious. Like whenever I eat a cookie and or peanut butter jelly sandwiches, I have to have some milk. That is a prerequisite because of that's you know the memory I had as a child. Water doesn't work. It doesn't clear up the palate enough, as you saw in the commercial where the guy was like Aaron Burr, Aaron Burr, and he had the peanut butter in his mouth. Milk only is the thing that gets you cleared of those uh, things on your mouth. I'll I'll say I'll say this too. Uh, obviously, the the sausage, the hot dog, is the ballpark food, right? Tis a hot dog. If you go, if if you happen to live in a uh, great sausage town like we do. You can get all varieties of, be it Polish or bratwurst, Italian, all of that. You know what? Uh, you don't see as much as I think you would at a, at a ballpark, a corn dog. How did you bring this up, Vinny? I, I don't know when the last time I had a corn dog out of the ball game. Not only that, let's step it up a notch. Corn brat. Sounds amazing. It does sound amazing. <laughs> You've ever had a corn brat? Is there a thing, uh, such a thing? Like I'm a, not sure. You know, Wisconsin innovation? If there's not, we need to get to I mean, to Wisconsin that. will produce it. If anybody's going to, it's going to be the state of Wisconsin. But uh, I would love a corn brat. All right. So after the break, we will talk more, not about food. We will talk more about Garrett Crochet, the starting rotation, and a little bit about the Dodgers-Padres series that happened in Seoul, South Korea. But first, Chevy, their best offers of the D of the year are during March Radness sales event. March Radness. Make your way to race Chevy on Route 12 in Fox Lake to join on in the savings. One of the top selling Chevy dealers in the Midwest, you'll always be able to shop one of Chicago's largest Chevy inventories. Perfect tailgate vehicles await at Ray Chevy during Truck Month, Truck Month, Truck Month. For a limited time, they're offering 0% financing for 72 months on new Silverados with over 100 available. 125 vehicles under 20000 what are you waiting for, guys? Seriously. Everyone loves the word free. And that's what you'll get this month at Ray Chevrolet in Fox Lake, a free oil change. All you need to do is mention CHGO when scheduling your oil change. Start the new year off right and schedule by April 1st. Visit Ray Chevy in Fox Lake or RayChevrolet.com. They've been serving the community since 1963. Find new roads. And... In fact, you're eating better is easy with their delicious and ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, 
and keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for? They keep on asking. What are you waiting for out there who are watching? Get yourself a Chevrolet and also order some Factor. Get started today and get after your goals. And you can fuel up fast with Factor's ready uh, restaurant quality meals that are ready for you to heat and eat whenever you are. They have pancakes, they have smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday, midday bites, and more. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, no cooking, no cleanup needed. Flexible for your schedule, as you can get as much or little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. And they've done the math at Factor because it's less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head on over to factormeals.com slash CHGO socks 50, that's 50, and use the code CHGO socks 50, 50 to get 50% off. That code is CHGO socks 50 at factormeals.com slash CHGO socks 50 to get 50% off. Ryan Herrera, our Cubs beat writer over there, he uh, heard you say that Factor is less expensive than takeout, and he literally fell out of his chair. I heard it. I was like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? You all right, Ryan? <laughs> oh, let's get to it. Today, we had uh, Daryl Van Scow and the, the Dutchman. He's down there in uh, spring training. He uh, sent a tweet out that uh, Patrick O'Fall said, the White Sox will need a fifth starter. That's no surprise. On April 3rd versus the Braves, the Sox sixth game. Opening day starter Garrett Crochet would pitch four days rest on April 2nd, but day two starter Michael Soroka would be only on three days rest on April 3rd, which will pitch on April 4th in Kansas City. Soroka will pitch April 4th in Kansas City, and more than likely we're going to need a person to pitch that sixth game versus the Braves. Garrett Crochet went out today for his last spring training start. It seemed like he threw 81 pitches. He got, um, as spring training you can do, uh, left the game like after the second inning or a third inning. In in the sec during the second inning, he was taken out before the second inning was over because yeah. uh, he the pitch count in that inning was ratcheting up a little too high. Uh, so they took him out of the game, but then were able to put him back in the game to start the third. Yeah, and his only bugaboo today was Nick Prado. Nick Prado got him for an RBI single, and then later in the game was a 3-2 pitch. He had to offer him a fastball, and Nick Prado absolutely destroyed that ball to right center. So Gary Crochet ends the uh, spring with an 81 uh, pitch performance today. Any worries about him going for that many pitches in his last spring start? Vinny? No, no. I mean, listen, that's the job, right? I mean, that's that's exactly what it is. And in fact, it probably is a little bit more, um, I don't know if you want to use the word encouraging, but at least, uh, you know, an answer some questions about whether you can throw that much, right? Come, come opening day. So another step up from that is probably pretty close to what you would be expecting uh, your opening day starter to throw anyway. I'm not saying that he's going to be out there for seven innings. He only went four and didn't even go the, the whole, the totality of that four innings today. But to get up to that pitch count is got to be promising for the White Sox. Uh, uh, again, it's going to be about what happens tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that leading up to opening day because this is all about how he physically is going to be able to respond to that type of workload. So here he is at 80-plus. I think that's a really good sign as he goes towards opening day. You'd th figure that number can probably go even higher. Mm -hmm. We'll see exactly what it ends up looking like, but um, if he can get to that, and be far more efficient than he was today, you're talking about six innings, which is uh, not just fine. It's entirely uh, within the realm of what you would expect from your opening day starter on opening day. Um, now, again, not as dominant today, right? This no. is not the Garrett Crochet that um, pitched so well in the lead in the previous uh, work he did in Cactus League play that it earned him that opening day spot, that it earned him probably the title of the team's best pitcher this year coming into today and giving up a run at all. Um, so he uh, is looking a little mortal, perhaps. Again, it's how you bounce back. And so a guy who was, uh, was perhaps not perfect today or not uh, as sharp as he had been prior Still only gave up, only gave up three runs, um, which, you know, your offense should be able to, to help you out there uh, to, to kind of negate that, that uh, damage. So I, I, I think even though this was far and away the worst that Garrett Crochet has been in a spring training outing, 
probably still one that you're able to look at and say, okay, he, he accomplished some stuff and, and actually maybe taught you some stuff about what he's able to do once he starts throwing for real a week from today. Okay, and Gary Crochet's final line was three and two-thirds, five hits, three earned runs, one walk, two K's and one home run to Nick Prado. So he wasn't as bad and he gave up some runs today. That's people were kind of freaking out. I was like, oh my God, this Gary Crochet, he's a uh, blowing up and gave up runs today to a team that, you know, should score a couple of runs. Uh somebody somebody named Ray came in after that, and hopefully that's not my guy Ray from Ray Chevrolet. But he did pitch a, a, a third of an inning and got his people out. Johnny Ray. Who wants to know? Who wants to know? Um it was good also to see that a familiar name that I don't think I has pitched this whole uh, spring training, and John Brebbia pitched it inning today. So he seems like he's on track to be on the opening day roster where I think I was worried about that, and I don't know if Pedro and you guys, when you guys got down there and spoke to him, if was they were they worried about John Brebbia's availability for next Thursday's opening day? Uh, I mean, I don't know how it's gone along the way. I know when that first happened, when it was first revealed that he was hurt with that calf strain early in spring training while I was still down in Arizona, the idea all along was that he was going to be ready for that he was going to be ready for opening day. Um, obviously, things can change as they get him actually into games and stuff like that. Today was his first Cactus League appearance, but he has pitched uh, in a few backfield games and minor league spring or you know spring training minor league games um so he has not been completely you know sitting around until today but um obviously good to get him out there and i think that uh you know if they if everything they see is positive then there's no reason that their initial timeline can't be uh, a correct one and he probably should be part of this opening day bullpen jordan leisure continued his dominant spring with two strikeouts in his inning of work uh, Tim Hill came in for an inning and gave up nothing also. So the bullpen looks pretty solid. These are the games that Pedro circled on the calendar and said these five games that we're going to be ramping up. But also that quote that he gave uh, Daryl Van Scow and the assembled media there, it does. I mean, initially it gives you pause because I think most White Sox fans, whenever they hear Pedro or anything coming out of the White Sox, they automatically, no matter what the context, think negative. Theoretically, they he knew and we all knew and we discussed the fifth starter that they are going to need in this rotation, specifically because of Garrett Crochet. He's not a regular number one starter where he needs extra rest than other guys. So he'll probably pitch on the second game or the third game of the Brace Series, but you're going to need somebody to pitch in that fifth spot. Would you say anybody's ahead right now or they're going to be doing like a bullpen game before that game for the fifth starter because it's kind of odd to not have your rotation set as five dudes that are going to be in your rotation to start the year because they haven't named the person what well, really they haven't named even the the rotation in its uh entirety even though they said that what uh number two is going to be Soroka number three is going to be Fetty so we're assuming that Flex is four but who's five it's a good question, uh, and I think we'll find out, obviously, in the coming week before uh, their opening day roster is due. But just to break it down a little bit, and, and, you, and you race through it a little bit there, but yeah, obviously Garrett Crochet is going to start game one against the Tigers. Two days later, game two, Michael Soroka. And the day after that on Sunday, uh, the final day of March is going to be Eric Fetty against the Tigers. If Garrett Crochet, as Pedro said today, is going to pitch the White Sox fifth game of the season that would be April 2nd against the Atlanta Braves and they don't need their fifth starter until the final game of that series uh, on April 3rd then we can uh, I think pretty confidently predict that Chris Flexen will be pitching the first game of that Braves series on April 1st on Monday okay. so uh, then you look ahead the, the after they uh, wrap up with the Braves, they have four games against the Kansas City Royals in Kansas City, mm -hmm. which would mean, in order, Michael Soroka, Eric Fetty, Chris Flexen, and Garrett Crochet all on regular rest, right, on Thursday through Sunday. So, is it possible that they say bullpen day for the final game against the Braves, and they don't really need a fifth starter until their third or their fourth series of the season. It's just one possibility. We'll see how things go. It's very possible that they name their uh, who the fifth starter is going to be 
on opening day before we get to the game that's going to be played a week from now. It's very possible that they don't need that fifth starter until game number six. Maybe that person is called up from the minors ahead of game number six, uh, you know, and they play the first five games of the season with an extra man in the bullpen. Um, there are a lot of ways this can, this this can work out. Maybe the guy who is going to be the fifth starter can just be a long man for game one or game two. Uh, we'll see how it goes, um, but uh, it's very possible that we might still not know who the fifth starter is a week from today as well. So um, a lot of different outcomes here, but uh, they are taking advantage of the schedule, and uh, perhaps uh, we are, you know, well into April before they even need to have a starter who isn't one of the four guys that we have already projected to be in that. And with that schedule, with that schedule, it's kind of weird that they're kind of skipping the fifth starter, but the fifth starter had to start after Garrett Crochet. I know why they're doing it because it'll be on regular rest when that happens. It's, and that's important for, for Crochet, right? Yeah. I mean, Crochet is a guy who has not been a starter in professional baseball before. Nothing is more important to those guys than that routine, right? And so, obviously, there will be day, or times throughout the season when they might be able to buy him an extra day of rest, you know, to benefit a guy who doesn't have a lot of arm, uh, innings on his arm. But it's important for him to get into a schedule of pitch, you're off for four days, pitch again, you're off for four days, and to get him into that routine, uh, I think that probably will be helpful for him, and that's why they're doing that. this the way they're doing it rather than right off the bat give him a fifth day of rest. Yeah, I've been watching the Padres-Dodgers series. And I actually woke up a couple days ago at 5 o'clock to watch that first game. That was a mistake, and you, Darvish, got, you know, didn't get hit hard, but he was in trouble pretty much his whole uh, three innings and a third, and he pitched like 74 pitches, and they took him out. They're like, that's enough. You're done. And then later, earlier today, you had both starters where Yamamoto got shelled by the Padres in the first inning, gave up five runs. They took his ass out. Same thing, Joe Musgrove, I think, after an uh, inning and a third, got taken out of the game. So it might be overblown that you need uh, a guy to go – certain amount of innings, a certain amount of pitches because we see with the Padres and the Dodgers right today, yeah, the score was like 15 to 11, but they are going to survive. The pitchers are going to survive with the White Sox. Even if Garrett Crochet goes out and gets bombed his uh, opening day start, I think the White Sox are still fine. But I would love for somebody in that fifth starter spot to be our Jordan Lyles, the guy that you know is not really good. He might have an elevated... ERA, but what that person does is give you innings, give you a rubber arm, and he can throw those innings, even if you're getting crushed. And I expect, and I'm, I don't know if the White Sox expect, I expect them to get crushed by the Atlanta Braves. That should be the thing that's going to happen because I think the Atlanta Braves, if not the best team in the ba in baseball, are one of the best teams in baseball, while the White Sox are not one of the best teams in baseball. And so they'll be throwing their ace out there. Spencer Strider will be pitching versus the White Sox. So I think, you know, that game you should just be having, as somebody uh, said, Tukey. I don't know about that one. That would be a little tough because that man, I don't know if he has the rubber arm and if he, they'll score 10 runs before he gets, like, four outs. So is there anybody up for that job that you think is higher than most people to be the fifth starter and uh, to be the fifth star of the White Sox when they do face the Braves on that uh, uh, April 3rd? I mean, the only name that comes to mind is Nostrini because he's pitched so well in spring training, right? And now we've seen uh, a guy like Garrett Crochet get rewarded for being excellent this spring. Yeah. Why wouldn't that keep applying to some of these younger arms? Now, I think we have talked so many times that, hey, Nick Nostrini's only thrown four games above double A. Yeah. You know, Nick Nostrini is uh, a guy who could have some developing left to do as good as he has been this spring. And so maybe the best thing for him and the best thing for the team when it comes to him is to send him down to triple A for a little bit and can make sure that everything is, is progressing the way you want it to uh, and not necessarily throw him into the deep end right away. So past that, though, there's really nobody that jumps out to me as being, you know, a, a guy who has won uh, any sort of competition, right? I mean, Tuki Toussaint had the, has the most experience pitching for this White Sox team in the major leagues, mm -hmm. but he hasn't been very good at all this spring, right? Not at all. The non-roster guys, I mean, what do we even have to, to look at on that front? You know, whether it's Woodford or Cool or Brad Keller – 
other than they've done this before in, in to varying degrees in the in the major leagues. Um, but if we're talking about hey, it can be a week or more until this fifth starter is even going to be brought up. Why can't? what Matthew Cortese said. Why can't it be someone like Jared Schuster up for a spot start, right? Why can't it be somebody who's already not made the team? Because as we've talked about, the roster changes from the opening day roster pretty darn quick. So it really could be any number of guys. Maybe they throw Tanner Banks out there for Damn. two or three innings, right? I mean, uh, uh, he's been pretty good this spring, he by is. the way. I think coming into today, didn't he have as, as many strikeouts as Crochet did? I didn't know that. I believe that's true. <laughs> no, I'm, that. I'm serious. I think that's true. It's amazing. But um, it it really it really has not made itself clear who a is going to be the fifth starter, you know, for the season, or b if they are going to go in some sort of patchwork method here in the first couple weeks, who maybe could pitch that first game? Because if we're just talking about who's going to pitch that day versus the Braves, and it doesn't matter whether they pitch again or when they pitch again, it could literally be anybody, and we could be looking at just a bullpen game. I mean, they were talking about them having 10 options to be a starting pitcher. It's kind of odd that they don't have that person actually marked down right now as and they the, might. the fit starter. They just might. Not, They're just, just not telling us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know people are out there, sign Clevenger, sign this guy, sign that guy. Firstly, Michael Lorenzen got signed last night, I believe, by the uh, – the Texas Rangers, and so he's off the board. And even if they did sign a person like Mike Clevenger, like some of you guys want, or even worse, Trevor Bauer, these people would not be ready for that fifth starter spot anyways. They would need to be built up themselves. Yes, they're doing their own work on the side, but it takes a long time and also work with that catcher, especially those guys don't know Martin Maldonado or uh, Max Stassi at that much. So they would take some time for them to actually get acclimated to the White Sox thing. So I think the person who's going to do the fifth starting job is on the roster right now. And hopefully that person doesn't get beat up too much and his uh, ego doesn't get shattered by going against those Atlanta Braves. After the break, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, spring training and anything that has been going to happen now and carry on throughout the season that might surprise some of you but won't surprise Vinny Duber who was down there in Arizona what is price picks price picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America where the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS it's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players including pros and sharks you just pick more than or less than two to six players on their stat projections and watch the winnings roll in football season might be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's the tournament season or the fight for the playoff home court, there's no shortage. I just jumped on me of high stakes basketball moments. This time of year, get in one of the exciting prize picks uh, contests, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. And I wasn't just, I was just alerted that there was a free Put those in quotes. Caitlin Clark Square up on prize picks right now until Saturday at 2 p.m. Central. If you pick, she will score more than or less than a half a point. It's your choice. I'm not going to tell you if you should pick Caitlin to pick more than or less than. It's your choice. But it is free for you, so go to prize picks right now. All you got to do is pick that one for more or less on Caitlin Clark's points. And then another player. If those two players do something and do what you said they're going to do, you win money. And the conference tournaments are here, and the NCAA tournament is here, which means bigger moments in college basketball are getting closer. Be a part of the action with prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. And I've been playing prize picks, and it's been going great. My play usually is Io DeSumo. And anytime he goes against the Atlanta Hawks and plays in Trey Young, he dominates and locks up. I pick. More than points, rebounds, and assists for Ayo DeSumo, and less than points, rebounds, and assists for Trey Young. Go to pricepicks.com slash CHGO and use the code CHGO for your first deposit match up to $100. That's pricepicks.com slash CHGO and use the code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And our guy, Charlie the Bacon Guy, is based out of Woodridge, Illinois. And he makes craft bacon and bacon jams in over 35 different flavors. Bacon and bacon jams are naturally cured, preservative-free products. No ingredients that Charlie cannot pronounce himself are involved in the process, unlike most store-bought bacon. 
ethorabate and sodium asorbate, for example. Damn it, Charlie, stop putting these terrible ass words. <laughs> How do you in spell here. that, Herb? E R Y T H O R B A T. Oof. Vacuum sealed and freezes perfectly. Bacon lasts in the fr- package up to 60 days in the fridge and one week after the seal is broken and nine months in the freezer. Bacon jam lasts about 90 days in the fridge and one year in the freezer. But if you're keeping bacon in the freezer for that long, you're doing it wrong. Check out the awesome merch, beanies, hats, t-shirts, stickers, and coffee mugs right now. Some of the flavors that they have at Charlie the Bacon Guy are maple pepper, chorizo, French toast, honey chipotle, Cajun, Jardinera, raspberry, ch- raspberry chipotle, which I have, and Maui Wowie, which I also have at the house. And the bacon jam I have at the house also is original. It's running out, so I need to call Charlie again. They also have bourbon bacon jam, mango habanero, and Charlie cherry jalapeno. The bacon jam goes perfectly on anything. Put it on scrambled eggs, toast, with or without jelly, crackers, burgers, grilled cheese, charcuterie boards, cinnamon rolls, pizza, or Charlie's favorite, the spoon. And the bacon vault is where Charlie has all the flavors he's made in the past. If it's not currently available, give Charlie about two weeks and he'll make it for you. Wouldn't you love access to the bacon vault? I mean, that he's in Woodridge. Promising. I mean, I'm sure if we, as CHGO members, ask Charlie if we go to the bacon vault, he will let us in there. I want to plot like an elaborate heist to break <laughs> into the bacon vault. Sorry, Charlie. We're stealing <laughs> your bacon. Yeah. Starting now, you can save 10% on your order at charliethebaconguy.com when you use the code CHGO at checkout. You can pick it up, which is the most efficient way, or he can deliver it to you or meet you halfway or even ship it to you. He makes the bacon so you can bring it home. Follow Charlie on Instagram at charliethebaconguy or at Twitter at czthebaconguy. Email Charlie at charliethebaconguy at gmail.com or his website is www.charliethebaconguy.com. So, Vinny, today was, we're, man, we're only seven days away, Vinny. I cannot believe it. This time, ne- this time next week, you, we've been doing a post-game show. Mm, 310? You that quick? Hopefully. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, from your mouth to God's ears and the baseball bats. But... Seven days away, and you were down there early February, a little into March, looking at these players, seeing what they're doing. We don't have access to these guys, and you're not reporting every single thing that you see down there. It'll get a little bit uh, monotonous and a lot of a lot of information. But is there something you saw down in Arizona when we come back in July? You say, hey, yeah, that's what I saw down there in Arizona. I'm not surprised that that continued deep into this season. Well, I think the biggest difference in terms of actual result, obviously there's an aim to do things a lot differently, but we're going to find out whether that's the case or not. But something that I am pretty confident based on what I saw down there will be way different than last year is that clubhouse and the way that these guys act and approach not just playing, but playing with each other. You know, this was such a big problem last year, so much so that you had Rick Hahn standing up at the trade deadline saying that they addressed their culture issue by shipping so many guys out of town, right? (laughs) And so I think whether it's Pedro Grafol taking a different attitude in the second year, being a lot more comfortable, or more so the idea that Chris Getz in the front office really focused on bringing in guys that were good fits, I think it's going to make a big difference in terms of the in terms of the clubhouse. Listen, this team might not pitch well. This team might not hit well. This team might not be able to do some of the things that Pedro wants them to do in terms of playing fast, right? You know, they, they can approach it that way, but who knows if they're going to be able to to do all those little things successfully uh, when the talent level doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, com- comparable, comparable to some of the other better teams in the league, but. They can approach it a much different way with a much more positive attitude. And I think after two years of fans saying, oh, they look they look like they don't care out there. Oh, they look like they're not trying. Whether or to what degree that was true or not aside, I don't think you're going to be saying that kind of stuff this year because I think you're going to see a bunch of guys who fit together well in that clubhouse who are – at the bare minimum, the type of personalities that this front office is trying to make this team identity, right? So I don't know if all this 
play fast and do the little things and, and, you know, don't worry about having guys who can hit on the roster kind of thing. I don't know if that's going to end up in a lot of wins, but I think that you're going to see the White Sox take a step in the direction that they want to go in in terms of their personality. And I think, and I think that that, I think that's a lot more important than, than fans might realize. I think fans probably at the end of the day won't maybe care as much about that because the team might not be winning. But I do think that it's a big deal. I think that it's a big change. And I think it will maintain itself uh, regardless of what the results end up being. Hey, you know me. I'm process over results. I don't like when you get good results when the process was flawed, but it seems like the process is good even though the results might vary and they might be bad. I mean, as we're looking at it a week away from game from opening day, we're all probably thinking they're going to lose 90-plus games and we're probably going to have that next Wednesday for our preview show. And it might be that them losing 90 games – might be the best thing for them because of what you're talking about, where the chemistry and the clubhouse is a little better than it was in years past. I think, you know, going through the 2020 and the 2021 season, where I didn't really hear anything about consternation or bad guys in the clubhouse, but similar guys in 2021 were in the clubhouse in 2023. I think it's one of those things where it's the chicken or the egg where, hey, you're winning. So 2021, maybe there were people in there that didn't mesh and the clubhouse was bad, but wins were coming. So things weren't changed. Finally, in 2023, we had a house cleaning and we had to hit rock bottom in 2023 to get back up to where we need to be. Now, I would have, you know, released Pedro after last year. That's why I'm not a manager or a general manager because I'm, you know, very impulsive. I'm glad that Pedro seems to get his sea legs. He seems to get his his confidence about himself. He's speaking a little bit more boldly. The fact that he's taking these last five games as these are getting ready for the regular season type of things. The fact that Garrett Crochet is pitching 81 pitches the week before he's going to be throwing the ball against the Tigers is a good thing. As I always say, you play how you practice, and they're getting that mindset ready for these t- these guys to say, hey, this is the season. And if you're not going to play the way that we necessarily want you to play, the door is always there. They've shown the door uh, theoretically to Michael Kopech. In a way. In a way where they're like, yeah, you're not doing the things that we want you to do, so you don't get the thing that you want to do. And let's not confuse things. Michael Kopech has not, was not sent to the bullpen because of the, no. his attitude or the way he was approaching things. He was sent to the bullpen because... He didn't get the results. And I think that it that is an important part of this is the expectations are low, but look at Chris Getz being willing to make these bold calls, you know, before the season even begins, right? So it's not maybe it, – it, I think he's showing that it is not going to just be kick back once the, once the games start counting and wait till the next offseason when you can start doing some other stuff to make the team better. I mean – he pulled the plug on a, what we thought was a pretty important part of that starting rotation, um, and I think that should kind of make everybody's eyebrows go up and and say, "All right, maybe maybe there's some things that I'm not going to expect that are going to happen this summer." I hear you, and that's like I'm a fan of doing anything that you, as the manager or general manager, believe is right, whether or not it hurts people's feelings, whether or not you gotta have some tough conversations, and it looks like. Pedro's taking the kid gloves off, and it looks like Chris Getz has taken the kid gloves off. If you don't do the things that they want them to do, they you to do, you're not going to get the spot that you want. And so I'm glad that it's over. Like I wanted TA back, even though we had a horrible year. They're like, no, TA is not here. It's too much money, $14 million. We'll get somebody who's going to play defense and do the things that we want them to do. And Paul DeYoung, you're never going to probably have a problem with Paul DeYoung, except for maybe his bat won't show up, but the defense is going to play. Well, and, and two, on the TA front, like, we we assumed, I mean, we assumed, I mean, I think correctly, yeah. at the, at when the decision was made, that's too much money. They didn't want to spend that money on him. Yeah. They had the opportunity to spend way less money on him. Oh, yeah. After the fact, for months, he didn't sign w- with the Marlins until fairly recently. Yep. So, like, they they showed they didn't want him back, which, again, is a big, bold decision considering the guy was the face of the franchise when we were sitting here a year ago. 
And Matthew Cortese asked uh, the money we saved this year by not doing anything should free up some money for free agents next year. I mean, we know the answer to that. We think we know the answer to that is no. But also, maybe the White Sox show Jerry something and Chris gets something where, hey, we're not that far away from doing X, Y, Z, competing in AL Central or things like that. But also, remember, Colson Montgomery's down the pike. So if you do have a person that is kind of – out like if Yo Mancada doesn't have a good year or doesn't have twenty four million dollar of a good year, he's going to be out, and that position needs to be filled by either Brian Ramos and maybe Colson Montgomery. And so I don't know if they're going to be spending money on a free agency uh, a signing. They've done a lot of trades where they've stocked up their minor league system. I would think they're going to be keep on going down this road where they're kind of inexpensive and not doing a lot of things until. Hopefully they're ready to go in a couple of years and then supplement the roster with any free agent that they need to because their money and the payroll will be so low. Well, and it's all relative too, right? I mean, you know, Matthew, you say, you know, could they free up money for free agents next year? Well, yeah, it could. It might not free up the money for the, uh, you know, some sort of gigantic free agent signing that's at the top of the market. But, you know, the, the White Sox have spent on free agents before. Again, it's all relative. But they have, you know, done that kind of thing before that would that dwarfed. They've had off seasons before that dwarfed what they just had, right? Exactly. And so, if they learn this year that hey, this team could use some guys, you know, I'm I'm thinking back to the uh, I'm thinking back to the Melky Cabrera, Jeff Samarja, oh, David Robertson off so season, happy that off-season. and like, what's to say they can't have an off season like that oh. if if they learn what they want to learn about this team this year, right? And I think that. So there, there are multiple ways to answer that question. Yeah, they could have a relatively a much bigger offseason a year from now than they did this past winter, but also the team's got to show that it, it deserves it, right? I mean, it, they, they're, they're going to learn a lot about this team one way or the other. I think Chris Getz is hopeful and hoping that he learns something that allows him to go into next season being like, I'm going to be aggressive because I think that – 2025 is a year in which the White Sox can compete. We'll see how realistic that is come September, right? Because we don't know the answer to that question yet. But uh, could that kind of offseason be coming next offseason? If the conditions are right, and I don't mean the money conditions, I mean the conditions of uh, this team being good. <laughs> As I take me a sip from my Jacob Blood and Kugel Brewing Company beer, Finney, can you tell the fine folks about Wisconsin Innovation? Wisconsin Innovation, Herb, is one of my favorite things. Mm-hmm. It has birthed, birthed, if you will, glorious inventions such as the cheese curd. Mm-hmm. Birthed glorious inventions such as the indoor water park. Birthed glorious things such as Madison, Wisconsin-based 90s rock band garbage. Not garbage at all. I but, love... But also, they should birth... The corn brought that you just brought up. They should, and I have all, utmost confidence that they will. In fact, other Sean earlier said, uh, batting helmet full of mini corn brats. That sounds just like the greatest Get thing Sean ever. Out here. That's just a phenomenal idea. But, of course, Wisconsin Innovation has also birthed the great, fantastic Lining Kugels family of beers. We're enjoying two of those right now. I'm having a Sunset Wheat. Herb, you're having a Barry Weiss, mm-hmm. who, uh, great, great singer back in the 70s, Barry Weiss. But uh, there's Girl also... I can't get enough for your love, babe. Barry Weiss? No? Yeah. Okay. There's also uh, Honey Weiss, which is made with real Wisconsin honey. There's also, uh, if you drive up across the border, you can get your hands on some Liney's Original. And of course, guys, the sun is shining. It's shandy season. You can go to the Jewel, or you can be like Sarah and go to your friend's house and get your hands on some wonderful summer shandy. Uh, you can... Get yourself a case or two because you're going to want it for a lakeside picnic. You're going to want it for a rate side tailgate. And you're going to want it if you go up to Wisconsin and just start paddling around in a canoe. So flavor life's simple moments with Lining Kugels, the official craft beer of the Chicago White Sox. Go to liney.com slash chgo to find delivery options near you. That's l-e-i-n-i-e dot com slash chgo or pick up Lining Kugels pretty much anywhere they sell beer. Lining Kugels, flavor the moment, celebrate responsibly. The Jacob Lining Kugel Brewing Company, Chippewa Falls. Yes. And before we leave, and t- speaking about Line and Kugel, the opening day broadcast. We're going to have some Line and Kugel specials. We're going to have some swag be thrown out. I haven't talked to the owner there. He said that he's going to provide some swag from Ballpark Pub 
to be given out to people who are there for our uh, live show and watch party. We're going to get started as far as the broadcast at noon, but you got to get there earlier than that so you can drink some Line and Kugel specials with us before the show. And then after the show is done, we'll be drinking some Line and Kugel with you at Ballpark Pub, 514 West Pershing, about four blocks south of Guaranteed Rate Ooh, Field. And it's all presented. By Lineys. Always. Tremendous. It's the perfect way to ser- celebrate opening day, whether you're attending the game or not. If you're a person that's like, I don't want to put a dollar into Jerry's pocket, come to our tailgate, our tailgate, our live show and watch party at Ballpark Pub. You can enjoy the opening day festivities, be in the area without giving Jerry your money. That's the perfect way to say, Jerry, I enjoy the White Sox, but I don't enjoy you, and I'm not giving you any money. I'm giving this local business, a south side business, my patronage. And you can have some folks in attendance win our T-shirts, win our swag. And like I said, my guy Rich said that he will be giving out some extra T-shirts uh, for anybody who is there at the date. So RSVP currently right now, like stop what you're doing right now, RSVP for get a spot. Line and Kugel is going to be there. Specials, 514 West Pershing Road, Ballpark Pub. Sean Anderson and myself will be there from noon until the game starts. And then we might stay a little bit later. Then we got to get back here to the studio after the White Sox win. And uh, right at a week from now, Vinny, at 552, we'll be doing another post game of Garrett Crochet throwing a no hitter versus the Tigers. A no hitter? You're going to make me work that hard on opening day? I mean, he'll be out of the game after the six, but a no-hitter. Anyways. Oh, okay. And then gotcha. the, the, the bullpen. Six no-hit innings. The bullpen takes over and gives it up anyways, and we'll be talking about that next week. But we do have a show tomorrow. Tomorrow it's a remote show. I think it's at 3 o'clock. So it'll be myself, Sean, and Vinny from our respective homes. So you can join us at 3 o'clock as we talk about these Chicago White Sox will only be six days away from White Sox baseball. Opening up versus the Detroit Tigers. Anything you want to say, Vinny, to the folks before we leave? Seven days. I'm excited for baseball season to start. Finally, like we were at the ballpark today. We got to see the field. Green grass. I tell you what, Roger Bossert doesn't get paid enough. I don't know how much he gets paid, but he doesn't get paid enough. That field is always in pristine predi- predi- uh, conditions. They're covering only the infield dirt, which we're is doing a, a little work. Which we're is doing a, a little work. It's a thing I've never seen before, but it looks beautiful. It smells beautiful. It was only 35 degrees, and it felt all right to me, of course, because it's March and it's supposed to be colder. But next week, it's supposed to be maybe in the 50s. So. You don't have to wear your winter coat next week. You just maybe wear a light jacket to the to the ball game and you get to enjoy bring the, some. Bring the winter coat, just in case. Yeah, and, and you get to enjoy some line and kugels at the ball game. So, for Vinny Duber, you can follow him at Vinny Duber on the Twitter machine. Myself, Herb Lawrence, Ecknerwell23. Sean Anderson will be back tomorrow on our remote show. Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. And our producer, Sarah, thank you for joining us on CSGO White Sox. We all silly like the mayor. 